There is a perception in the Linux community that if you're a Linux user and you don't think Linux is the most amazing thing ever, you're a traitor of some kind. And I think that that's absolute hogwash. I think if you truly love something, you have to be willing to point out its flaws. And there's one thing that I'm absolutely 100% sure of about Linux is that it has many flaws. And I've talked before about how I think Linux could go mainstream. I've talked about whether or not we even want Linux to go mainstream. And this video is not really about that. Today I want to talk about a few things that Linux could do better. And this doesn't really have anything to do, like I said, with wanting Linux to go mainstream. But I do feel like a few of the things that I'm going to talk about today would play a really big role in making it easier for new users to actually use Linux, but it would also make it easier for existing users to use Linux. So let's go ahead and jump into five things Linux could do better. The first thing I'm going to talk about is installation. And this one really does focus on the new user. And when I talk about new user, I'm talking about someone who doesn't really know a lot about computers because Linux does not serve that community well. Now, whether we should even try to serve the Lite 8 community at all is a discussion we can have somewhere else, maybe in the comments below. But if we were to serve that community, I think installation is probably the biggest hurdle for getting that community to actually install Linux because the vast majority of those people don't know how to burn an ISO. And even if they could find the ISO on a website, you know, of a distro and actually choose a distro, they'd be lost at how to actually go through and burn that onto a USB or a DVD or whatever. Uh, it's just not something that most people know how to do. And moreover, it's not something that we really expect people to know how to do. If you're just a regular person and you've never installed Windows before because you've just bought a new computer every time Windows dies, then you've probably never even tried to burn an ISO before. So this would be a completely new experience and it's not the most user-friendly thing in the world. Now, how do we, how would we fix this? I don't know. Uh, that's not a great answer. I'm, I'm, I, I know that. Whether there's a technical solution of being able to somehow begin an installation in Windows, I don't know. Because when you install the next version of Windows, you start from a program within the Windows that you're using, and then it reboots into the installer. If Linux could somehow come out with something like that, that'd be great. I don't know if technologically that's possible because of Secure Boot and all this nonsense, but there has to be some kind of solution to uh, removing the barrier of an ISO. And it's possible that I'm putting too much of a emphasis on how hard this is. Uh, I just know that if I went out to my parents and told them that in order to install their new operating system they had to burn an ISO, uh, there'd be in, uh, they'd, there'd be trouble. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is something that is probably just preaching to the choir, and this is less fragmentation. The Linux community does a fantastic job of duplication of effort, and I'm not even really talking about package managers or even distributions because I think it's great that we have a ton of package managers. I think it's great that we have a ton of distributions and I understand that that causes confusion amongst new users. When I'm talking about fragmentation and duplication of effort really, I'm more talking about the little things that we tend to spend a lot of time on and those things are like uh, different file managers that we don't really need. The Linux Mint team just went through and created a bulk rename tool, which uh, I'm sure it didn't take them a lot of time, but it was a big feature in in Mint 20.2. And the fact that it even exists is kind of just mind-boggling. Why did they spend their time doing this? And it's not the only example, and I tend to pick on Mint a lot for their duplication of effort, but they're not the only ones that do this. There are a ton of... Linux developers out there that just seem to constantly remake the wheel, things that we don't really need duplicates of. And that's definitely something that we need to uh, fix in the Linux community because Linux has real problems. Audio and a few other things that I'll talk about are actual real problems. We're in, a, in the middle of a transition from Xorg to Wayland, and if people really wanted to spend their development time on something, they could focus on that instead of having to constantly rebuild applications that we already have. 
So that's definitely something that Linux could do better. The next one is better acceptance of new users. I've actually made a video on this before, uh, and uh, I, I regret not being able to call it the title Noobs Are Gonna Noob. I should, really should have named it that, but the Linux community has a tendency of being very insular. And we're very much a, uh, a community of people who have banded together and don't really accept outsiders all that well. And that becomes a problem if we want to grow the community. When people who have never used Linux come in and ask stupid questions, we very much tend to tell them to read the fucking manual. And I know I know, I go on and on about being more open to new users, and but I really do think that this is a big flaw that the Linux community has. And it's not only new users that I'm talking about, I'm also talking about exclusion of groups with inside of Linux. For example, Gentoo and Arch are two communities that are very much insular and cultish, if you will, and they don't accept new users even if those new users have used Linux for a long time. Even if new users to those things go into that situation knowing how to look things up but still have questions, very often they're not welcome and treated with respect. They're treated with derision. And that's not a great thing, even though they're technically not noobs. The next thing I want to talk about is better support for high DPI displays. Now, this is really a technical thing that is going to continue to get better. Some distros do it better than others already. But as we move forward, 4K and 8K displays are going to become more and more common. And Linux doesn't do a great job right now of managing high DPI displays, whether that's actually supporting them at all or whether it's actually allowing people to manage them to make things so that they actually show up on screen in an acceptable size. You know, there's tons of very small problems within this big, larger problem that have to be solved. And the Linux fragmentation thing is not really helping because each distro seems to have been doing this a little bit differently. And it seems to have been left in the hands of desktop environment developers in terms of how they're going to solve this. And that means that KDE is going to do it in one way. Mate is going to do it in, the, in one way. Gnome is going to do it in another way. And that's not... <laughs> A great thing. It, this should be kernel level. It should be something that is very much a standard across all Linux distributions because like it or not 4k and 8k is here to stay and like I said it's going to become more and more popular as time goes on. The last one I want to talk about is websites. Now this is stupid uh, but I don't know if you noticed this but every Linux distribution website, for the most part, is god-awful. It's just really bad. Now, there are some exceptions that aren't so terrible. Ubuntu's isn't terrible. Uh, Fedora's isn't terrible. But Linux Mint, get your shit together. Your website's horrible. Uh, Arco Linux, I love you to death, but your website's not great. And, um, again, Arco, your website's changed four times in the last year. It's <laughs> That's not a great experience. Uh, I'm doing a Debian test on the computer behind me. And Debian's website is horrible. I don't know if the reason why Debian is so bad is because they've been around for so long. Uh, they just haven't really done a very good job of keeping everything organized. I, that might be the problem. But their website is is just so bad. It They have ISOs all over the place. Things aren't labeled properly. It's, not, it's just not... It's not good. I can't really speak to experience with like Elementary OS's website. I don't use that distribution at all. But just kind of broadly, discovery for Linux distributions is not great. And the website is a very much a representation for your distribution. And if you don't do that well, it makes it even harder for new users to your distro to find the information they need to actually install it, find the community, and so on and so forth. And kind of a subset of this is that the support forums that we still kind of put up with, and I'm talking about actual forums, those things still exist, and every single one of them is so totally overcomplicated that it really hurts to use them. And if you've never used forum software before, you know, you probably are going to be lost within five minutes. Those pieces of forum software have been around for 20 years, and they really haven't done a great job of moving into modernity. They've 
just keep piling on new features on top of a really old code and it's not great and every linux distribution uses these old form softwares uh and like i said it's not great now a lot of distributions have moved to newer ways of communicating with the community whether it's discourse or something like telegram or discord or something like that uh you know they have gone through and tried to modernize in terms of how they support and uh, cultivate their community but these forum things are still there and a lot of times they're the kind of the favored way of getting things you know providing support and that software is trash I mean it's just it's garbage and it's complicated garbage so uh, yeah websites on Linux for Linux distributions especially just they need to get better so those are five things that I think Linux and the Linux community sh can do better in the comments section below I'd love to hear your thoughts on a few things you think the Linux community could do better. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment, all that kind of stuff. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Chris, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.